Hello, welcome to the Mark Janot Show, the cybersecurity show. Cyber attacks are not just this hacker plaything that they do. Cyber attacks can have billion dollar impact implications on infrastructure and anything that you will ever even dream about. So in this video, I'm going to talk about the top computer viruses that nearly destroyed mankind. So without further ado, let's get right into it. We are going dark. So throughout the history of computing, several viruses have stood out due to their destructive impact and widespread reach. You have My Doom of 2004. Uh, My Doom spread through email by sending itself to addresses found on infected computers. It, you know, it used various subject lines and messages to trick recipients into opening the attachment, which would then execute the worm. The impact was at its peak, My Doom accounted for a significant portion of global email traffic which estimates ranging from 16 to 25% of all emails being distributed uh, or attributed to the worm. It was responsible for slowing down internet performance and causing extensive damage. Wait for it. Estimated at 38, 38, 38 billion dollars. Now, the worm's rapid spread and the subsequent DOS attacks caused significant disruptions including taking down the SCO Group's website and affecting Microsoft's operations. MyDoom's legacy continued with subsequent variants targeting other companies like Google, AltaVista, and Lycos, causing temporary disruptions. Despite efforts to mitigate its impact, MyDoom left back doors on infected systems, which were later exploited by other malware such as Doom Juice Worm. Next, we have the So Big that was 2003. It first appeared on January 2003 as a, you know, as So Big, right? Which was a variant. Um, you know, So Big A was a variant, right? Uh, it reached its peak infection with So Big F in August 2003. It spread primarily via email attachments and network shares. Uh, it was ca it caused an estimated 35 billion dollars in damages worldwide. At its peak, one in 17 emails contained the So Big F virus. Now, how did it spread? Okay, it spread through various methods, right? It was disguised as a legitimate email attachment with subjects like thank you or your details. It scanned infected computers, right, for email addresses to target. It, you know, it used its own SMTP engine to send infected emails, bypassing normal email clients, and then it, it then copied itself to network shared drives. The so big F variant was particularly effective because it could scan various file types for email addresses, allowing it to rapidly spread to contacts of infected users. Now, when it comes to the impact, the so big worm had widespread effects. It briefly grounded Air Canada flights. It slowed computer systems at major companies like Lockheed Martin. It caused 50 million in damages in the US alone within days. And at its peak, it accounted for 98% of all viruses detected by AOL. You have the I Love You 2000, right? <laughs> How ironic is that? A virus called I Love You. Now, the way it spread was the worm was distributed through an email with the subject line, I love you, and an attachment name, love letter for you, .txt .vps. When users opened the attachment, the worm executed a visual basic script that overwrote files on the user's computer and sent copies of itself to all contacts in the user's Microsoft Outlook address book. This method of propagation allowed it to spread quickly, particularly within corporate networks where Outlook was commonly used. Now, when it comes to the impact in, of damage, uh, you know, when it comes to I Love You, it overwrote various file types like JPEG, MP3, and other critical files leading to data loss for affected users. Major organizations, including the Pentagon, CIA, and large corporations like Ford and Microsoft had to shut down their email systems to contain the spread. The worm's rapid proliferation highlighted vulnerabilities in email systems and the potential for social engineering attacks. Uh, the next one we have is Code Red 2001. Code Red, Code Red, Code Red. How it worked was Code Red exploited a buffer overflow vulnerability in Microsoft's uh, Internet Information Services web servers. It spread by sending malicious HTTP requests to random IP addresses, infecting vulnerable systems. The worm ran entirely in memory, leaving no traces on the hard drive. 
Now, when it comes to the impact and spread on July 19th, 2001, over 359,000 computers were infected with cold red in less than 14 hours. It caused website uh, defacements displaying the message, hello, welcome. <laughs> and, you know, hacked by the Chinese because, you know, they got to be petty. The worm spread consumed significant network resources and caused disruptions to internet traffic. Now, the behavior pattern was from the 1st to the 19th of each month, the worm focused on spreading to other systems. From the 20th to the 27th, it launched the denial of service attacks against specific IP addresses, including the White House website. Uh, it became dormant from the 28th to the end of each month. Now, uh, there is Crypto Locker of 2013. How it worked was, you know, once this once a system was infected, Crypto Locker would install itself in the user profile folder. And and that's a theme here, guys. They love to hide themselves in the profile folders of things, right? Uh, it added a registry key to run on a startup. Uh, the contact command and, you know, it, it contacted command and control servers, also known as C2 servers. It received a 2048-bit RSA public key. It encrypted files on local and map network drives using the public key, and it displayed a random message demanding payments. CryptoLocker encrypted various file types, including documents, pictures, and AutoCAD uh, files. Now, the ransom demands, this is what makes this a little bit unique. The attackers demanded payment within 72 to 100 hours, threatening to destroy the private uh, decryption key if not paid. And the ransom amounts varied, right? Initially, it was around $300 to $400 in USD. However, you know, they're not going to just leave it at that. We got to do Bitcoin because it's untraceable, right? Why, why would we do cash? We got to do Bitcoin. Later, they adjusted it to um, 0.3 to 2 Bitcoins. The payment could be via Bitcoin or prepaid cash vouchers like Money Pack or UCash. Now, CryptoLocker, it infected 250,000 machines in the first four months. By early November 2013, about 34,000 machines were infected, mostly in English-speaking countries. Now, the, it was estimated to have extorted around 3 million from victims. Now, it was able to be neutralized. A crypto, crypto locker was effectively neutralized in May 2014 through Operation Tovar, which took down the Game Over Zeus botnet used to distribute the malware. It also seized control of the botnet's servers. It allowed security experts to develop free decryption tool for victims. You have Melissa 1999, one of the first major email-based viruses. Melissa caused email servers to crash due to its rapid spread, leading to estimated damages of 80 million. Uh, you have Stuxnet of 2010. This sophisticated worm targeted industrial control systems and was used to physically damage Iran's nuclear facilities, marking it as one of the first known cyber weapons. Yes, guys, it does get real. It does get real in the field. It does, you, you know... <laughs> Let, let's, let's just hope that our cyber defenses are at, at a certain level that, you know, people don't actually successfully hack into nuclear uh, situations because that won't be good at all. So the main message here, guys, is uh, I would say how to protect yourself, right? You can start by installing an antivirus program. You know, whether you're connecting to the Internet or not, having a reliable protection is the route to go. Antivirus programs are a minimal investment and worth, you know, they're worth the dollars as soon as you power up the computer. Uh, you can also install anti-spyware and anti-malware programs. Please avoid suspicious website, right? A lot of times websites will notify you if you're about to enter a website that attempts to install or run a program on your computer, but not always. Avoid websites like those, right? Uh, never open email attachments without screening them, right? The most common way viruses are spread remains to be through email. Make sure that you use an email provider that requires all attachments to be scanned prior to opening to ensure your computer doesn't get a virus. You know, many, many people will automatically assume that any attachment that lands in their work email inbox is safe and will open it without thinking twice. And that's how they're able to get within corporate networks, guys, okay? So you want to make sure that you're covered from that from that on point. Uh, set up automatic scans, right? Setting up scans to run on your computer daily or weekly is a good idea to get rid of any virus. This keeps your computer updated and clear of issues. There's also, you know, watch out for downloads, right? You know, 
uh, don't just download anything that comes across your way and update, update, update. Make sure that your, your software and or basically anything that you're using is updated with the latest software because bugs get identified, vulnerabilities get identified very often. And what, you know, some of the top level companies do is they patch it. So make sure that you're patching your system, okay? So if you like this video, please take a moment to hit that subscribe button and the like button. If you like this video, again, please take a moment to hit that subscribe button and the like button. Is there a virus that I didn't talk about that you feel like is worth mentioning? Also, let me know that in the comment section. Stay safe. I appreciate your viewership. See you in the next video.